Hey everybody, this is Greg Gossett from Gossett Trading and Mentoring Live and today is Monday, February 1st, 2021. We're in the first day of the new trading month and the last hour of the current trading day. The last hour is my favorite time to make the majority of my buying and selling decisions because at the end of the day, the large financial institutions take control of the price away from the day traders and the algorithms who control it during midday. Uh, I consider what they do with their buying and selling good information. I consider it an edge, and that's why I make the majority of my buying and selling this, this buying and selling decisions at the end of the day based upon what the large financial institutions are doing. So, thank you all for coming today. It's always nice to have everyone. I really appreciate everyone's input and makes it a great little channel. At least I think so, and, and I look forward to seeing all my friends every day. So. Hope you had a good weekend, hope you had some fun. And uh, uh, currently the uh, Dow is up 322 points, big up day, up 1.07%. The NASDAQ is up 345 points, it's up 2.64. And the S&P is up 67.21, up 1.81. So the NASDAQ, the clear winner today uh, in the indexes between those three. So, all right, here's the plan for today. As always, first of all, I'm gonna run the US legal disclaimer. Secondly, we're gonna come back. We're gonna take a look at my current positions. We're gonna talk about when I bought them, why I bought them, how, I manage, how I'm going to manage them going forward. I did have a couple good day trades today that I will share with you. After that, we're gonna go over to the board and we're gonna take a look at your positions. I see lots of green over there, so that will be fun to go over there and take a look at that and see how everyone's doing. Uh, after that, we're gonna spend a few minutes, talk about trader psychology. I mention this each day, but I really, really uh, am sincere when I say this, but getting control of your emotions, sticking to your plan is the greatest skill you'll ever acquire. It's better than any trading system. Uh, I promise you, you can have the best trading system in the world, but if you don't follow it, really doesn't matter. So that's why I like to talk about trader psychology each day. After that, I have gone down through my watch list and I have gone down through the results of Kamal Scanner. There are some potential end of day trades that um, I've designated and I have three requirements whenever I'm looking to enter a trade. First, needs to have a confluence or a combination of indicators ideally on multiple time frames. Number two, you have to have a good risk to reward ratio, at least two to one. If you're willing to risk $100 to the downside, you need to be able to make 200 or more to the upside based upon your risk being good, solid, strong, valid support below you and on the resistance side, strong and likely resistance above you is how I look at it. And then number three, please take a few minutes every day. Please take a few seconds or as many seconds as you need before you hit that buy button and just ask yourself, do I really need this position? Do I, do I really need it? Is it really the best setup? How many other positions in this same industry do I have? Am I just adding more risk by just adding another position in the same industry? Right, it's really important. And uh, also think about how many positions you have in general, how much account heat you have. And then lastly, please always remember to uh, position size based upon what the current volatility in the market is. The market volatility has picked up recently. And so therefore uh, you should be trading a slightly smaller position size to compensate. So with those three requirements, I'm going to look at the end of day candidates. I'm going to whittle it down at the end of the day. And if something meets all my criteria and uh, I like the trade, I will take it before the close of the day. Um, after the market closes, if you have any questions for me, please feel free, type them in the chat. If you have any stock symbols that you would like me to look at before the market closes, I'm happy to do that. If I have time, uh, just put them in the chat and I'll do my best to get to them before the close of the day. And then lastly, if you have any new additions or subtractions for me up on the board that you would like me to update, if you could please wait till the market's closed before you let me know about it, that way I'm done trading and teaching, pressure's off, and uh, we'll spend as much time as we need to get those taken care of, okay? So hang tight, I'm gonna run that US legal disclaimer and I will be back in about 40 seconds, thank you.
This video or live broadcast, like all instructional materials produced by Gossett Trading and Mentoring LLC, is created and published for informational and educational purposes only. Please carefully read and or listen to the U.S. government required disclaimer before watching this video or live stream broadcast. The video link and disclaimer text are located in the description section of this video or live broadcast here and here. Thank you so much. All right, let's see who is here today. First on deck, we have Lova74. Good to see you, Lova. Hope you're having a good day. Gary is here. Good to see you as always, Gary. Gary says, looks like Wall Street Bets is trying to put a squeeze on SLV. Not sure it's working. Yes. Well, uh, something seems to be working on SLV. Uh, we're going to look at that in a minute. Good to see you, Gary. Johan is here. Hello, Johan. Good to see you, sir. Hope you're doing well. Bob is here. Hello, Bob. Good to see you, my friend. Johnson said, happy Monday, everyone. How are you doing, Greg? I'm doing well. Thank you, Johnson. Steve Burns is here. Hello, Steve. Good to see you. Always an honor and a privilege to have you here, Steve. I mean that, and I'm sure everyone else feels the same way I do. Hope you're having a good day. I know you're having a great day in AGQ. Big day. And so we're going to get to that in a bit when we get over to take a look at everyone's positions. But congratulations on that, Steve. Really nice. Miko is here. Good afternoon, Greg and all. Hello, Miko. Good to see you, my friend. Frank is here. Hello, Greg and group. Hello, Mr. Frank. Good to see you. Johnson said, I could not place any trades with my broker E-Trade in the first two hours. Oh, that's a bummer. Hmm. Kamal is here. Good to see you, Kamal. And, uh... Um, good chatting with you, although briefly this morning. Um, Johan says, ATSG looks like a deep dip buy. ATSG. Uh, not bad. Not bad. Under 30, over 30, under the 200, over the 200. Good risk to reward. Let's look at the weekly. Uh, weekly is above the 50 EMA there. Uh, that's not bad at all. Let's look at the monthly up, weekly down. It's a little light on the volume, 263,000 shares. Let's look intraday and see what that looks like. Oh, it looks okay there. Looks, looks pretty good. Who had that? Oh, Johan did. Okay. So yeah, this is an air, air, air transport. So that's right up your alley. That looks good, Johan. Gary says, crazy snow in the Northeast today. We are getting close to two feet. Wow. 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 <laughs> Hope you like snow, Gary. Morgs is here. Good to see you, Morgs. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're having a nice evening in South Africa. Steve says, that is crazy snow, Gary. I don't think Tennessee has gotten that much total in 20 years. <laughs> yeah, probably not. Uh, Kamal says, Steve, are you in TN? Gary says, Steve, it's the most I've seen in a long time. I'm ready for the warm weather. I hear you. Dan gives us a peace sign. David says, hello, Greg and group. Hello, da Dan and David. Uh, Mark said, I sold SLV this morning for 11.8% gain. Yeah, I did the same thing. I sold it at the Oprah. Ranger Trader, what is going on, Jesse? Good to see you, my friend. Always honor and privilege to also have Ranger Trader here, and he's at Ranger underscore Trader over on Twitter. So show him a little love. He has a great channel. He's a super great guy, previous student of mine, and uh, uh, just an honor to know, just an honor to know Jesse. So, all right, should we get to it? Let's get to it. Um, oh, Steve says, yes, I'm in Southern Tennessee. Oh, sorry. I thought when he said TN, I, uh, I thought that was a stock. <laughs> All right, let's take a look. Silver, as we discussed, Frank in a half position. Yes, bought silver calls. Pat is in. I also bought only a half position, but I'm sure glad I bought the half position. Dan is in and Yas is in. And Steve, okay, Steve's in AGQ. So that's the other chart. That's why he's not here. Uh, monster gain. Bought this here with the 520 crossover. I sold it right at the open. Well, I got filled at 2768. 
Um, I just decided to take it off. We were up here near the sixth ATR channel. Um, I just, I didn't want to be greedy about it, to be honest with you. Uh, so yeah, 11.89% is approximately what I made. Um, so that was great. That was fantastic. I mean, two days for that. So congratulations, Frank. Yes, Pat, Dan, and yes. Oh, I have yes twice. Maybe he bought the stock and bought silver calls. I'm not sure if he's here. He'll let us know. Uh, spy. Okay, well, nice overnight spy trade for sure. I bought spy uh, Friday at the close at 370.07. I sold it this morning at 373.84. So three bucks and change overnight. Pretty good. Happy with that. Um, and I will be buying this again today. And then what do I have here? I have Gary and Steve and Johnson bought. February 5th, 375 calls, uh, puts, uh, because of the 1030 EMA crossover. So right now it's 376.69. So it, they are not in the money as of this moment. USO, I did buy USO up nicely today, up 2.79%. I bought it down here at 30.97. So, so far, this has been a 14.35% uh, trade. Uh, I bought it on the monthly bars, long, long trade on the monthly bars, uh, but it was a deep dip buy, under 30, over 30, under the negative third channel, over the negative third channel, um, and a V2 to boot. And so I've been in this two, just over two months, but really good return. So I'm happy with that. So that's all of my positions, all nicely up today. Uh, I did have a day trade on Apple earlier in the morning. Right here, we had a higher low V2. This is higher than this low. We had a V2 bar one, two, three, Two washes out one, three closes above one. I bought an intra bar. I didn't wait till the end of the bar. I bought it at 132.12. A couple bars later, had a nice big up move. I sold half at 133.03. A few more bars. We rejected the one ATR channel. I decided to take another half off there. And then we finally had a close below the previous day's low, almost exactly the same price. So basically I bought at 132.12, got out at 133.03 twice and 133.55 once. So that was a nice little trade. Um, let's take a look here. Now we also have, oh, I can't remember now. I know Frank was at 111 and I think Yas was at 123. I think, yeah, I think Yas exited his position. So I think we only have Frank. So Frank, if I'm wrong, let me know. But I don't remember you selling Apple, but I could be wrong. But I know you're in at 111. So you're having a, a good day and a really good uh, trade at, uh, in general. Um, VIX. I did take a, one trade on VIX today. Um it was profitable, but not a big deal. Um, we had a test of this previous low. We had a rejection of the 250 day. I bought it at 1992. Next bar it went zooming up. I sold half at 2004, moved sideways. Then it came back down to my entry point where I just got out on that second half at break even. So the first half was profitable. The second half was at break even. So not nothing to write home about, but a positive trade nonetheless. Pat bought VIX here at 1667. I know she sold half on the way up. It is down 5.92% today, but obviously Pat is still nicely in the money. Let's take a look and see what that equates to. 16%, yeah. I would say that's pretty good. So that's all for me. Let's run on over here and see. Hey, Frank has a pump for us. Best part of the podcast. Best part. Let me type this in here or paste this in here. 
and so I can share that with everyone later. All right. Every trade is a fresh start. It brings a new perspective like seeing a painting or other work of art. So take another look at the chart. There's always something new it can impart. Oh, wow, that's so good. Every trade is a fresh start, which is true. It brings a new perspective like seeing a painting or other work of art. So take another look at the chart. There's always something new it can impart. Bravo, Frank. Fantastic. Thank you, sir. As always. Kamal says, I have lived north and south of you 10 years in Lexington, in Lexington, Atlanta, Georgia. Used to go to the Smokies all the time. Steve says, I've been to all those places. Steve says, I will exit AGQ today on the 70 RSI rejection and also the nasty reversal candle. Okay. And what Steve's talking about here is here. And what a trade. 15.67% so far, but you can see it gapped up and did reject, currently rejected the 70 RSI and a big rejection uh, reversal bar. So, you know, it's a volatility bar and I know Steve likes to get on the, out on those kind of bars, but 15.81%, that is something to write home about. Um, CRWD. Close to a 520, could be crossed already. Looks like looks like it is crossed already. It's 214.07 to 213.83. I don't know how this back test. I don't know if Kamal has his back tester handy. I don't I don't know how that back test. I think I've tried to test this several times, but the software I use doesn't uh, have that symbol available. Um, Steve says the stock market rally is on very low volume. Yep. That last time we had that rally was on low volume. I was concerned. Yeah. Says, yes, I have both calls and shares. Nice. Sold calls with the open still have SLV shares. Just amazing how it popped. Added 5% of my port. Nice. Nick is here. Good to see you, Nick. Uh, Nick says Facebook and Ford stocks are on the move. Get them while you can. Okay. Well, let's take a look. Uh, Facebook rally today. I honestly, I don't see anything there. That's really compelling to me. If we would have rejected the 200 day moving average, that would have been good. Low volume on the way up, huge volume on the way down. I would imagine it's going to find a very difficult time to get back up here after all that selling, but I could be wrong. I often am, which is okay. You can still be a profitable trader and be wrong quite a bit. Actually, uh, Ford, um, you know, we came up, we rejected the third ATR channel. We've sold off. There was a lot of selling going on here. Plus I wouldn't buy it that high. I want to buy in the value zone. Uh, Mark says VRM also close to that 520 crossover for the IPO that Steve's been using. Steve says fa big Facebook bounce near the 200, but very volatile. Yeah, I agree. All right. Let's take a look at your positions. Gary. March 5th, 290, 280 put spreads. You got $190 contract. So as long as it stays above 290, Gary makes all the money by March 5th. It's 321, so it's safely above that 290 mark. Did bounce off the 200 day. This is something I'm looking at end of day. Uh, Checkpoint Software, David. David by, bought check, Checkpoint Software at 129.48. It's been a wild ride up and down and back up again. But nice, David, if you still have it, earnings are coming up, keep that in mind. Twitter, Johan with the nice Twitter trade at 45.90, it's 52.38, it's up 3.68% today. Johan is up a tight little 12.31%, nice going. Coca-Cola, Timothy bought Coca-Cola here at 48.52, it's currently 48.50. One, so down a penny. Uh, it did lose the 200 day moving average on Friday. I owned that and I sold that there and then it came right back up. This is actually on my list as well today. But the liquid stock that Frank bought at 6281 is currently 6391 up 
1.95% today. This bud is for you, Frank. Very nice, my friend. Good going. Uh, Shopify, Kamal. The most impressive thing about this trade is not how much it's up, but the Kamal bought the low of the day. He bought it at 1081. That was the low. It's up 3.37%. And Kamal is up a nifty 4.75% on the trade. Very nice. Q's. Frank is in the Q's back at 284.60. It's 322.89. Q's having a big day today, up 2.65%, which is a lot for a for an index. Uh, Kamal and Frank bought CRM at 216.80. Beautiful move up, up 1.45% today. So congratulations, Kamal and Frank. JMIA Karen, nice trade of Karen's at 4560. It's 6357. It's up 10.6% just today. I don't know if Karen still has it, but I hope she does, obviously. DKNG, I know who this is. This is Kamal at 5034. Uh, he bought that intraday a couple days ago. It's 5486. It's up 1.39% today. Congratulations, Kamal. Fiverr, nice to see this for Johnson. Uh, he sold uh, a put spread 190, 160. Didn't start out too well, uh, but nice move up today. And a V2, higher low V2 here. So that that would uh, make me feel better if I was in uh, the trade. Um, and rejection of the 50. It looks pretty good. Actually, it looks that looks really good. Okay, NIO. Oh, Gary, did you get assigned the shares at $57? Um I kind of feel like you did, but I know you were selling uh, at the money calls if you had, which is was a good move so far. So let us know. Return to value V1. Yeah, technically it could be another V1 today. Uh, Fastly. Johan bought Fastly all the way back here at 86.80. It's 109.10. It's down just a little bit today, but nicely up on the trade. Here's what I was talking about with uh, Steve and Gary with the 520 crossover on AGQ. It's up 16.21%, everybody. Congratulations to Steve and Gary for a two-day trade of over 16%. Very nice. And AGQ, by the way, is double leverage silver. Teladoc, Frank, all right, I believe Frank, yeah, Frank bought here at 182. Friday, he sold 90% of his position, giving him a 10% runner. It is down a little bit today, so looks like that was a good move. INAQ, Frank bought INAQ back here at 1590. It's at 1672. It's up 13.43% today, and he's up on the trade now as well. PLTR, Karen bought PLTR at 32.50. It's 34.28. It's down a little bit today, but up on the trade. UUP, nice uh, move on buying the dollar, Jatson. Jatson bought the dollar at 24.42. It's 24.54. It's up a half percent. That's a big move on the dollar. Um, AMC. Gary bought one put of AMC February 19th, $9. So it has to be under $9 plus the premium that he paid. So this one's out of the money so far. PSNL, Johnson bought PNSL at $38.44. It's $40.52. It's up 5.5% today. Very nice, Johnson. SOLY, Ramble bought this all the way back here at $9. Big down day today, but still up on the trade. And I don't know why this keeps disappearing from my screen, but let's get NVAC up for Frank. Woohoo, Frank. Man, so proud of you. Frank bought this two days ago at 135, everyone. Is it a double? I can't do math. No. It's up almost 50% in two days. <laughs> wow. Let's give Frank a hand. Unbelievable. This chart is good representation, everybody, that sidewards motion leads to big moves, either the upside or the downside. We don't know which way and we don't know when, but they it's almost, you know, eventually sideways motion breaks out to a trend. And this is a perfect example of that.
Kamal says, CRWD tests well, 50% profitable. Okay, well, there you go. Whoever asked about CRWD, that crossover. Steve says, CRWD has 130% gain on the back test versus 260 buy and hold. VRM, nice catch. What, should we look at VRM again? VRM. Thirty-eight, fourteen, thirty-eight, thirty-three. So the at least on mine, are we talking about? Yeah, at least on mine, there is not a crossover yet. Gary says I did not get assigned. Okay, good. What do I think of SQ? Um, I'm I'm neutral on it. There's no v1 or crossover or anything like that i mean it's above the 50 rsi which is good it's above all the moving averages which is good but probably just not enough for me to take the trade but yeah it looks decent nio yeah and i nio could you know it's still holding the V1 that happened here, but there was not two days of sideways motion. Now there is two days of sideways motion. If today can close above yesterday's close of 57, basically if it can close above 57, it would be a legitimate trade the way that I trade. Gary said, I sold half my... Do I have Gary? Yeah. For a 20% return. Nice. <laughs> Jasmine says, hello, sir. Sorry I'm a little late today. I hope you brought a note for being late. No, I'm kidding, buddy. Good to see you. Ava, hello, Ava. Good to see you, my friend. Ava says, hello, Greg and all. Looks like Net may have a 520 crossover. Net. Cloudflare. I think I've tried... So it's not giving me today's bar, maybe because it hasn't traded yet. This, this is the same thing that happened to me when I missed the NIO trade was exactly this. It, I can't see the bar, what's going on. So uh, I'll give this a second. Stan Lee, good to see you, Stan. Hey, Greg, in a directional market, what do you do when all the carts look similar? How do you decide which stock to trade? Well, you know, I have different entry techniques. I have different entry signals. Um, they may all look the same uh, to a lot of people, but to me, they look much different. Um, I just decide based upon which chart looks the best and which one has the most entry signals. Yeah, this isn't showing today's bar. Okay. Let's head on over. Uh, so listen, you know, I like to talk about trader psychology. There's some really good Facebook channels, Twitter channels uh, that uh, put out great content. It's free, good trading words of wisdom, trading philosophy. And uh, this is a new, uh, uh, this is a new channel that I subscribe to and because I really like this uh, post. And um, I also uh, liked a lot of other posts that when I subscribed that I saw in there, but this is Money Trade Edge better thinking better trading sounds good to me at money t dot 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 i don't know if that's right but put in money trade editing uh, money trade edge better thinking better trading uh but i like this channel and i really 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 like this uh post that they have your best teacher is your last trading mistake Short and simple to the point, but you know, think about it. It really is. I mean, I, I know from a lot of you in the group and people that I trade with and know trading, um, a lot of times I know they're kind of making a mistake. Like I just based upon how they trade, not a mistake for me, but based upon how they trade. And then if it turns out bad, they're like kind of down on themselves. Why did I buy so much? Or why did I do this? And blah, 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 blah. Well, if the trade would have worked out well, there would not have been a lesson to be learned. But if the trade turns out poorly, then there really is a lesson to be learned because it's in the recent past. You, you still feel it and therefore you learn the lesson better. 
but your best teacher is your last trading mistake. So focus on those mistakes. When you have a losing trade or if you make a mistake, just an, a flat out mistake, um, learn from it. Let that mistake be the teacher, internalize it while there's still the sting to it, right? And I think it will help you in the future. But again, money edge trade, thank you, or money trade edge, thank you, better thinking, better trading. Your best teacher is your last trading mistake. So remember that, take a look at your mistakes and please learn from them. Frank says, Greg knows I like to keep a 10% hold on home runs for my stamp collection. That's right. That is right. Um, give me one second. I don't know why the delivery always shows up right this second. I apologize. Hang tight, okay? Okay, okay. Oh, there's Cloudflare right there. So that finally showed up. Um, I don't, I really, I don't see, I don't see a, a valid signal the way I trade here. It could, it's close to a 520 crossover for possibly tomorrow, but it has not, it has not crossed yet. Okay. Okay. Greg knows. Oh, okay. Johan says Zoom higher low V two and does that five twenty touch and go count as a crossover? I have Zoom on my uh, on my list today as as well. Um. Well, that's kind of a a kiss. I call that a kiss when the when the moving averages just kind of touch and bounce. This isn't bad. It's, it's a return to value. It's a sideways motion. It's a nice um, washout of, of Thursday's bar, washout of the, of the previous day's low, and a V2 under 50, over 50. Yeah, it's, it's, it's one of my favorite, to be honest with you. Jatson says, have taken a small yet risky bet in Amazon, waiting on the close above 33.26. Frank, uh, da, da, da. so I don't, it, I don't think that counts as a crossover. I think I've had this discussion with Steve. I think it has to go under and back over. Although if it's under and then closes even, that does count. But I don't think it went under, Johan. But I like, I mean, aside from the crossover, I mean, I, I'd rather have a kiss of the of the moving averages and bounce off than nothing. But, you know. Uh, let's look at the weekly. Weekly sideways motion. That baby's going to run one way or the other. Stan says, I got, I get so confused. I have 13 scripts in my watch list and I can see a 2050 crossover on all of them. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Jadon says, mostly looking at it close will add to my Amazon position if close is near. All right. Well, uh, we have enough time. Uh, let's do this. Let's take a look at the indexes in general, everyone. Um, we were about, you know, we had those bearish divergences. Uh, the, it, it did go down after that divergence. We've come down, we've bounced. Um, on Friday, we had a lot of volume to the downside on the Dow. Today, we have rallied. We have rejected the 50 above us on weak volume. So I don't know. That's not real favorable from the way that I look at this. This this looks weak to me on the Dow. 
On the NASDAQ, it's a different story. It's a V2. The V2 is a little high for me. It's above the one ATR channel. Um, healthier than the Dow, for sure. Uh, but I would not take this trade here because we didn't have any sideways motion in the value zone. And the S&P, um, under over the 50 SMA, however, no V2. It would be interesting to see whether or not we can hold the 50 RSI. And did the Dow Jones? Yeah, has not tested the 50 RSI yet. Okay, let me check over here. Okay. By the way, if anyone's looking at Zoom, There's a 22 cent bit ask spread there. So just to keep, just to keep that in mind, okay? Jatson says, if we look at weekly chart of S&P, it was a mere pullback to the uh, 13 EMA. All right, let's look at it. I don't have a 13 on there, but I have a 10, but it, that's true, Jatin, but this big bar, last week's bar, regardless of what you're looking at EMA or EMA-wise, that's a big, nasty bar that's larger than one ATR on huge volume. All we have done is rally back to the halfway. And you know all about that. When you have big bars down on strong volume and you rally back to halfway, more times than not, that's it. It's just a bounce. So that's just my opinion. I could be way totally wrong. I could be way totally wrong. All right, let's look. We were talking about Zoom earlier. I do like Zoom. I, I like the um, return to value, the sideways motion, the V2, here's bar one, two, and three. Bar two washes out bar one. Bar three is above bar one's close. Also washed out this previous low, under 50, over 50. I quite like Zoom. And if we look over on the weekly, we're right in the value zone. We're not up at these extended levels. We're holding the negative one ATR channel. What does the monthly look like? Uh, well, it's, it looks like a pullback in a big uptrend. But the weekly looks very tame. Uh, not overheated is holding the negative one. And the... Uh, uh, on, on the daily, the entry point would be this V2. So I do quite like Zoom. Uh, Coca-Cola, you know, you could take Coca-Cola here with an under 200, over 200. It's well off of its highs. And here's an example for you. Um, uh, Jatin, big down bar on Friday on volume we came up we tested the halfway and that was it and we came back down so i'm going to pass on coca-cola mastercard you could all, this is also a valid trade it is a bounce or a little bit of a rejection of mastercard uh, for the 200 it does offer a pretty good risk to reward ratio if we look at the weekly we're still in the value zone i'm a little concerned about Two weeks ago, we hit that big down, really big down bar. That was this week. Um, you know, it is up on an up day, which is good. But yeah, it's, you know, it's decent. It's, it's decent. It offers a good risk to reward. I think Zoom has more um, signals, actually. Verizon, oh, earlier in the day, this looked like this might be a potential with the V1, although right now it is not. It's under the 30 RSI. So that one doesn't count anymore. AT&T, uh, V1, false breakout from here and a close over the 200 day. Not bad, not bad. Uh, this was very bearish here with all this selling going on here. So I still think I like Zoom better. Lockheed Martin, under 30, over 30 and a V1, but 
tell you, I just, I, I wish there was a double bottom with the bullish divergence. Here we have a low, here we're lower. This low has deeper bars than over here. So that is not called the divergence, that is called a convergence. So I still like Zoom better. Adobe has a V2, although I believe this already rejected the 50 RSI, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it already rejected the 50 RSI today above and closed below. So that is off my radar. So really, the, the, the ones that stand out to me the most today are Zoom and MasterCard. Let's look at some of these other ones. NTNX, nice little V2, only one day of sideways motion though. So I would pass on that. TW, really big and strong, but as I mentioned at the beginning of the program, risk to rewards important, and uh, I, this looks chasey to me at this point. PPLT, big gap. I don't like to buy after big gaps here. Uh, not a lot of volume, 271. Cyber, well, nice little V2. Two, it's a little high to the one ATR channel. Let's look over at the weekly. It's just too high on the weekly for me. It's it's above the third ATR channel. You know, I mean, statistically, uh, if that comes down, I think it's going to come down pretty hard. So I'm going to let that one go as well. MKC. Uh, did this go under thirty, over thirty? I'm not quite sure. Let's see. No, nope, it went to 35 and uh, it looks a little chasey even right here to me, especially with the negative one ATR channel above it as resistance. FDS, it's not a bad setup, everybody, but this only trades 81,000 shares. It's a pretty good setup. It's a false breakout from this low. It's a nice V2. It's an under 30, over 30. If this had more volume, I would probably take it. Although I don't like the weekly with that 50 right above, but um, this looks like about a one-to-one -to, -one to me. Risk from here to here, reward from here to here. Maybe a little bit better than one-to-one, -one, but it's not, it's not two-to-one. And there's only 81,000 shares, so I'm gonna pass. CBOE. Nice, big, strong close above the 200-day moving average. We had the golden cross about a week ago, which is the five crossing over the two, or the 50 crossing over the 200. Um, I have not yet back test this, so I don't know. Uh, I'm still gonna pass. NATI, I'm certainly not buying that. Look at the big down bar. Yeah, it might get back to halfway. It might get to about right there, but I would imagine that's probably all she has in the tank. TSN. Yeah, technically it's a V1, but no sideways motion. MSI. Nice V2. Here's bar one, two, three, bar two wash, washes out bar one. Uh, but it's just, it's too high for me. It's right up here against resistance. It's already rejected the 1ATR channel. U, which is Unity Software. Um, we had a big move up. It did come back to 50% and hold. Not bad, but there is no V2. If there is a V2, I would have considered buying this. And XLU is utility sector. I don't really see anything there, to be honest with you. Currently, I like Zoom the best. And possibly MasterCard with the close under, close back over 200. That does back test well in the back tests. And if we look over on the weekly, yeah, those are, those are both decent. Those are both decent. As a matter of fact, probably what I'm gonna do is I am probably gonna take a half position in both. I like them both. They're in different sectors. Uh, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a half position in Zoom as long as it holds up, right? And let's see, half 40, 
Okay. And then MasterCard. So yeah, so I am gonna take two positions, but I'm only taking half a, half a position in both so that it uh, kind of equals out to just one position. Hope that makes sense. So ZM and MA, I'm gonna put those up here. ZM. That's not right. CM and MA. Okay, so I am out of silver. I sold that at the uh, this morning. Spy, of course, I am buying that overnight spy trade as usual. Oil's doing really well. Uh, Apple, I don't have Apple. That was a day trade. Okay. Okay, what do we have about 13 minutes? Quad says, happy Manic Market Monday, Greg and Group. Thanks, Quad. Appreciate that, bud. ITB is a good reset. I think we looked at that. Oh, no. It returned back to the value zone, but I would not take a V1 or a V2 above this green line, and it is above that green line, so that's too high for me, for me, the way I trade. L R C X. Oh, Lamb Research. Yeah. Um, well, it's a decent risk to reward there, but Gary, you know, I always like higher low V ones better than lower lows. Lower lows tend to bounce and then come back down. Higher low V ones, V twos tend to be able to sustain and to go up on a longer leg. So no, I mean, me personally, I no, I don't, I don't think I would buy that, but it is a good risk to reward ratio. I mean, the 50s right there. Uh, so, you know, if you want to look at it that way. PayPal <clears throat> has a 520 cross. Yes, it certainly does. Earnings coming up though on the third. DBX. It's okay. It's, did it hold the halfway mark? It has not held the halfway mark of the up bar. It came down more than halfway. I don't see a clear signal here, to be honest with you. Steve says, I exited AGQ at 60.59 for a 19.81% gain. Very nice. Bearish candle reversal at the 70 RSI. Way to go, Steve, bud. Frank says, thanks, Gary. I'll be careful. TSM. Well, we came into the value zone. This slightly went below here, but what I don't like about this, David, is it is a V2, but see the big gap? It gapped way high. It came back and closed a little of it, but there's still, for me, too much gap here. If it's more than a quarter ATR, it's too much gap. And I say that because gaps tend to get filled. And it's not a really perfect sideways motion here by any means, to be honest with you. So, I mean, it's, you know, you know where to get out if, if you're wrong, you know, right there, close below basically the 20 EMA. So it's a, it, it's a decent risk to reward ratio. Let's look at the weekly. Weekly's up at the, you know, it's at the fourth ATR channel. We're halfway of the big down bar. So, you know, that's concerning to me.
Okay. So for me, I like zoom for a half position. As long as it closes over 378.59, it seems to be. And then MasterCard, I like MasterCard with the bounce off of the 200. So again, I'm buying half position in Zoom, half position in MasterCard, and the overnight spy trade. Yeah, you got to watch those gaps, everyone. Gaps tend to get filled, you know? I mean, Roku's, Roku's not bad. It's a return to value. It is two days of sideways motion. It had a gap. It is more than a quarter ATR, and you're right up close to that one ATR channel. Chug. C H G G. All right. I don't, there was a V1 yesterday on Chug, not today. It was a V1 yesterday. like zooms making a high on the day which is nice So we have about five minutes. Amazon firing. Remember, earnings on Amazon are tomorrow. And by the way, here we go. Big day tomorrow. Amazon, Pfizer's in the morning. Alibaba's in the morning. UPS, Exxon. After the close, Amazon Alphabet. Amgen, so that's going to be a big day tomorrow for sure.
Yeah, I'd say it's firing up 4.43%. Wow. So is MasterCard still legit? It is. I'd like to see it close above that five day, but. Just waiting to see if Zoom's going to close above 378.59. So I'm going to start by MasterCard because that's more likely that that's going to hold. Okay, so I bought MasterCard right here. And then Zoom. Half a position. Ooh, I think I'm going to buy it now while the spread's low. Okay, I'm done. I am done, done, done. Now I'm done. Oh, you guys are buying PKI? P K P K I. Okay. Looks like earnings are tomorrow. Keep that in mind. Okay. Well, that's it for today. There's my spy. Let's see where I got filled on everything. So spy at 376.23, Zoom, ZM, at 381.53, and MasterCard, both of those were halves, at 322.36. So Zoom, I got filled at 381.53. Okay. MasterCard, I got filled at 322. 36. Okay, and then spy, I got filled at 376.23. All right, that should do it. And then I am out of uh, silver. 
So I'm going to put silver over here. And of course, zoom, halfway of the washout bar is going to be my stop. Yesterday's bar was the washout bar right about here. If we close below this kind of fuchsia looking line tomorrow, not intraday, but a close, then I will get out of this trade. As a matter of fact, if we reject the 50 moving average above here, I will get out of half the trade because that would be a bit of a danger. Um, uh, uh, red flag actually and then MasterCard the under 200 over 200 just to close over 200 would do it for me uh, to get out so big day today wow big big day very grateful for that I hope you all had a good trading day if you have any new symbols or any new entries or exits you'd like me to update on the board this is the time to do it uh, just put them in the chat and uh, I'll get to them. Just want to remind everybody that I do teach private one-on-one -on -one lessons in the evening time via Skype. I teach a 15-hour course, teach you everything, uh, exactly how I trade and what I've learned over the last 25 years. I know you'll be a better trader when you're, if, if, you know, if you take the course and finish the course, I know you're going to be a better trader. It's one-on-one. -on -one. I think it's the best way to learn. So if you are interested, all you have to do is send me an email. Email's in the description of this video. You can also send me a message on Twitter and I'll reply and say, thanks for saying hi. Let's do a quick Skype call just so that I can ask you some questions about you and your trading and your goals. You can ask me questions about the course. And then after the call, you can think about it. And uh, you know, if you decide you wanna take it, then uh, you can just email me back and we'll get it scheduled. And um, you know, I've mentioned this a few times, but I am increasing the price of this course to $1,750 starting February 16th. So the current price is 1,000. So if you book before February 15th, then uh, 16th, then you get it for a thousand bucks. But if it's after uh, 1750, so not a gimmick, I promise you, but uh, it does make sense if you've been thinking about the course that this would be the best time to take it uh, before the price goes up. Okay, let's see here. I know we have a lot of stuff going on. Gary is out of AGQ and Steve is out of AGQ. Excellent trade, gentlemen. We'll just take that one off. Wow, that's one to write home about for sure. Zoom is Gary. Okay. Jatin is an Amazon. Thirty-two ninety-four. Oh, good entry there. Good entry, my friend. Roku. Four oh two. Okay. Good luck on that. ITB fifty nine eighty seven. Okay. And then we have Steve Long PKI at one fifty two. Where did that go? One fifty one fifty two thirty five. 
Okay. Steve five twenty cross. Frank is also in PKI. Yas is in Zoom. Gary's in Zoom, Jatin we took care of. Johan is also in Zoom. And also ATSG. Yeah, I could see that one for sure. I can see that one. I do like that. Nice, clean trade. Under 30, over 30, under the 200, close under, close back over. I'll be rooting for you on that, Johan. Dan is out of SLV. Man, I'm glad to see we all did well on SLV today. So Dan is out. I am also out. Dan says, smash the thumbs up button for Greg. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate that, bud. Johnson is an NIO. Okay, so this one's a little bit confusing. So I'm just going to put your name here. You know, when everybody has a ton of positions, it gets cluttered. So Johnson at 55. Half zoom. Half MasterCard. Okay. And out of your puts. All right. Yeah, those puts went against today for sure. Okay, so I've got you out of puts. Anybody else out of puts or everybody still in puts? Um Morgs is in PKI. Okay, good luck, Morgs. Kamal says, no trades. Kept C CRM, shop, and DKNG. Yeah, I've got those for you, Kamal. Karen, good to see Karen is out of PLTR. Good trade. Still holding Jama. I've got you there, right? Yeah, I've got you there. Pat is out of VIX. No new trades today. Okay, Pat. Nice trade on VIX, though. Wow. Beauty. Quad says, thumbs up as always. Thanks, Quad. Jatin says, thanks for everything, sir. Have a great day. You as well. Nice trading, everyone. Boy, it looked like the world was ending on Friday. And then right back. Where did we close? Eh, you know, we were down 660 points. And we ended up 200. And again, I'm not that impressed with today's action because um, it was on low volume. You know, it was on really, it was on, it was really on low volume. Unless we had a big volume at the sur at the end, but no. I mean, my gosh, everybody, look at the Dow Jones. Look at the Dow Jones volume to the downside on Friday. Look at this minuscule, teeny, tiny little up bar. 
you know, you can look at volume as votes. A lot of people voted to the downside. Not a lot of people voted to the upside. Doesn't mean it can't go up, but I don't like that it rejected the 50 day as well. Let's look at the Qs. Yeah, Qs were up, but they were on lower volume. Spy were, was up, but on lower volume. So, you know, those are the small little details that you should look at. Jackson says, I live in Qatar. I will definitely meet you when I come Utah for sure. That would be great. You just let me know. And have a good evening in Qatar, Jackson. Quad says, Greg, as I mentioned earlier, I am in a small position of AMC. Okay, let's get that up there then. AMC. And where'd you get in at? $13. Hey, you're in the money. I think you got the low of the day. You pulled a Kamal. Was that the low of the day? Uh, 1291, but you were dang close. And that's Mr. Quad Racer right there. Okay. Ignorant plebe says media equals 24 hour infomercial to mislead the plebes. I would not disagree with you at all, ignorant plebe. Uh, those are pretty much my sentiment. I think everybody kind of knows that. That's kind of how I look at things, but yeah, I 100% agree. Uh, but regardless, we know people are influenced by the media, whether they're it's on purpose or, you know, <laughs> they are. That's why I don't even look at CNBC. I do not even want to hear about some expert that believes the Dow's going to blah, 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 right? Who's the expert? Why is he so expert? Do we know him? You know what I mean? I love when they just use the generic titles for people. But thanks for coming, Ignorant Pleep. Appreciate that, bud. All right. Let's see what's happening in after hour land. <clears throat> Apple's down just a touch. Dow is down. MasterCard's down. Qs are down. Spy is down. VIX is up. Can we get an up on VIX? Yes, up 24 cents. So, today, NXP, Cirrus, Logic, Rambus, Skyline. Anybody seeing anything interesting on the, on the earnings front? after hours hey i've got a sleep question for you anybody uh, like a sleep expert out there or maybe as a group so i have been having a hard time sleeping lately i don't know why like almost insomnia and if i go to sleep during the day i can sleep just fine but i can't sleep at night but I haven't been sleeping in the day the last couple of days and I still haven't been able to sleep. I mean, I slept, I slept maybe a, a few hours at the most. And, you know, I'm just debating, should I try to gut it out until tonight and just hope that I can do a night sleep? Or do you think it would be better that I can get a for sure sleep during the day? I don't know if anybody has any comments on that or experience, if you could let me know, I would appreciate it. Gary says, thanks, Greg. I ha have a great day. I have to try to dig myself out from the frozen tundra. <laughs> yeah, be careful. Be careful, especially out there on the ice. If you have crampons or something like that, those are handy when you're shoveling ice or shoveling a driveway. Dan says, Nicholas Darvis says, yes, media misleads regular investors to gain other edge. 100%. Look back at a chart, everybody. Look back at a chart when you have the big dips and look at the headlines from the dips. I like the one, I can't remember what year it was, but it was a black widow, you know, like, oh, this is the worst time. In fact, it was the best time to buy, right? Look at all the headlines, look at the magazine covers, look at the constant coverage on CNBC when the markets are all time high. Then when the market has a big, huge dip down, you look back and you see that all of that coverage was at the highs. 
they're you know in the big picture they're always wrong they're 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 always trying to get the little guy to just bail out at the very bottom sell cheap sell the shares cheap uh to, you know to the basically large financial institutions, professional investors. And then they flip it on its head. When they're really, really high, they're soaking the little guy to uh, buy, 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 buy. And the large financial institutions are unloading into the small guy because all the media coverage is so positive. I mean, it never ends. Oh, thanks, Kamal. Appreciate that, bud. I think I just heard that on Skype. You might be thinking too much, I guess. Yeah, I've got a few things on my mind for sure. I think you're right, Jatin. I do have a few things on my mind. Um, Quad says, Greg, try melatonin gummies. One or two of those about an hour before you sleep. They help a lot. Do your homework as far as the potential side effects, but they seem to be pretty safe. Yeah, I should get some melatonin. Thank you. That's a good advice, Quad. William says, wait till night. No caffeine or... Electrolytes, take a Benadryl, 25 milliliter, uh, uh, 30 minutes before you go to bed. I don't have any Benadryl. I usually don't take that kind of stuff, but okay, no caffeine or is that electrolytes? Is that what you're saying there, William? And good to see you, William. Dan says, for many going to sleep and waking at the same time is important. Dark and cool helps some. Ah, that's good advice. Frank says, hot cocoa, calcium, magnesium, and if needed, melatonin. Oh, that's right. I have heard... That cal I think cocoa has a little caffeine in it, though, doesn't it? So I want to stay away from maybe cocoa, unless there's caffeine cocoa. That sounds good, though. Calcium, magnesium. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, Kamal says, the little guy is currently buying GameStop, AMC, etc. Oh, yeah, there's no, there's no doubt. No doubt. Where did AMC, uh, what is it, GME? GME. So it was down 30, it was down 100 points today. You know, I actually looked at selling some uh, uh, bearish credit spreads on that. Um, they paid like $1,000 till the end of the week with not that much risk. I mean, I think it was $1,900 risk. I could be wrong, but I guess if I would have uh, put those on, they would have been doing pretty well already. Electronics. Okay, good. Good, good, good. That makes sense. Yeah, I need to do that more. I need to do that. Thank you, William. Normally, I sleep pretty well, but this last little bit, I have had a bunch on my mind. I've been busy. I've been working on um, an option strategy for about the last month that looks pretty promising. Nothing's foolproof or waterproof. Uh, but uh, yesterday, I probably spent three hours just going through the nitty gritty of every possible scenario and and trying to figure that out. And it's been constantly on my mind when I get an idea of something, you know, it's just always on my mind. And that's probably what it is. My subconscious working on that at nighttime. Um, Kamal says this might be related to your recent uh, illness. Yeah, it might. It might because I have been under the weather. Good point, Kamal. Sunny says, passion flower herbal tea about one half to 30 minutes before sleep is useful for racing thoughts caused by insomnia. I like Tadden brand. Okay, let me write that down then. So passion flower herbal tea. I have like sleepy time tea and I have been taking that, but that hasn't done any so t-a-d-i-n brand thank you sonny and i love your name by the way that's a great name if i ever had a son i think i'd probably name him sonny or even a girl be great either either or but that's a great name and thank you for the advice Jatin said i would suggest just a little meditation will help i do that as well i do the wim hof deep breathing i don't know if you're familiar with that uh, but I've been doing that and I think I'm getting some real good breathing, but it's not helping me sleep. Warm milk if you don't want the cocoa. Ah, good idea. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate that. That is nice of you. Look at that silver chart. Holy, holy Hannah. Look at that. So I have Frank in with the half. Yas with silver calls. No, Yas sold his calls, didn't he? He sold. Let me see if I can find this. 
he asks, he either sold his calls or he sold his shares. Too many, let's see. Yes, where are you? Mm. Did he sell his share? Whoa. Um sold the sold the calls all right so I'm, I'm going to take the calls off so i have frank with the half position pat still in and yes all right good good yeah gary i will let you know when i get this all together i will uh i'll share that with you and and uh, i know you'll understand it um sunny gives me a smiley face thank you jason says you'll be fine sir we always wish you wish for you well-being god bless god bless to you jatin as well thank you all right johnson says fubu looks to have touched 50 percent of high bar is this candidate for potential short uh f-u-b-u -U. is that the right oh f-u-b-o F-U-B-O, looks to have touched 50% of the high bar. Well, the way that I would look at this is I would look, I would look at the high right here. And I would look at the low right here. So 50% would be about right there not of an individual bar, but of the high and the low. So you can, you can do 50% of just an individual bar or of the, the most recent kind of high and low range. So F-U-B-O, is that the right one? F-U-B-O, is this candidate potential short? I, it would be more shorty to me if it couldn't get above this level, but this got above the third ATR channel. I no, I, I would I, I, I that wouldn't strike me as something that I would be interested in um, as a short. Johnson says, and also retouching third ATR. Yeah, on mine, it's. I mean, you know, it depends what your what your. Uh, ah, it's up twenty four percent today as well. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't think I, I would short that, to be honest with you. I do not think I would short that, Johnson. If I find a really good short, I will definitely let you know. Um, as I mentioned, lower high V1s and V2s, in my opinion, are the best shorts. So you have a high, you have a move back down, you move back up, but the move back up is not higher than that high, kind of like this. But then you need a V1 or a V2 to the downside. Like, so tomorrow, if we opened and then closed down below, then that would be a lower high V1 to the downside. Um, that would be my suggestion. All right, well, listen, everybody, um, let me just leave you off with this. You know, my favorite little graphic. If we all do one random act of kindness daily, we might just set the world in the right direction by Martin Kornfeld. So I've been saying this for years. Let's go out and try to do one nice thing today. Uh, but mine's a little different. Let's try to go out and do one nice thing for a human. Let's also go out and try to do one nice thing for an animal. Both of them will appreciate it. It will make their day, make them happier, and it will also make your day and it will be good for you and should make you happy as well that you're helping someone or an animal out. All right. So let's always remember that. Uh, I'm going to head out for a uh, hike and, uh, <laughs> and try to make it through the day without going to sleep. You know how that is like when you're traveling jet lag or something. 
It's about how I feel. Um, Kamal says, how would Tesla set up for a short here? Well, so we made a higher high here, Kamal, right? We made a higher high right here. We have come back into the value zone as expected. People that were short from up here covered people that missed the move up bought. So that's two groups of buyers. So what would have to happen now is we would have to come back up, but not go higher than this high, like maybe come up to about here and then have a V1 or a V2 to the downside. So I wouldn't short here. I don't like to short in the value zone. I might short under 50, but right here with the 50 below it and all that, no. But if I was looking to short this, and I think it's a pretty good candidate, honestly, because I can just tell if we even get up here, we're not gonna have any green bars. So it'll be a bearish divergence. So here's a higher high. We've dipped down Kamal. We have to come up. head back down with the V1 or a V2 lower than this high. So I've, I've been watching that as well. Uh, Gary says, come on, my wife is long Tesla, no shorts. <laughs> Good for her. Good for her. All right, everybody, I'm going to get out of here. Thank you for coming. I hope you have a good rest of your day. On the way out here, I have to run the U.S. legal disclaimer. Uh, but um, hopefully we'll see you tomorrow. And good trading today, everyone. Take care. Bye. U.S. government required disclaimer. Stock, options, futures, and forex trading is not appropriate for everyone. While there is a potential for large rewards, there is also a substantial risk of loss associated with trading. The material in this video or live broadcast is not geared towards any particular individual or to any particular financial situation and is not intended to meet the particular investment objectives of any viewer. This video or live broadcast, like all instructional materials produced by Gossett Trading and Mentoring LLC, is created and published for informational and educational purposes only. Any and all information contained in, implied, or referenced by this video or live broadcast is not to be construed as investment advice, and no representation is made that any individual or entity involved in production of this video or live broadcast is an investment or financial advisor or is registered or authorized to give any financial advice. We are publishers and educators only. Therefore, the various producers of this video or live broadcast will not accept liability for any loss or damage of any kind, which may arise either directly or indirectly out of the use of any of this material, including any loss of profit. No representation is made that any account or investment will or is likely to achieve the profit or losses demonstrated. We recommend consultation with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision. This video or live broadcast is not to be construed as an offer to buy or sell any security, financial instrument, or financial product of any kind. Notice is hereby given that any individual or entity involved in production of this video or live broadcast or their clients may have an interest in any security, financial instrument, or financial product mentioned or referenced. Any simulated or hypothetical performance result depicted does not represent actual trading and therefore may under or overcompensate for the impact of various market factors, such as lack of liquidity.